first puzzle. Uh, where is it? Is it this thing over here? That missing fragment you have found with four more portions shall be merged. Only then may you return the Hasuna to harmony. That sounds like it's relevant for solving some future puzzle in another room, but where is the puzzle for this room? There's something down there. Yes, close that thing first. Yeah, right on this little pillar there's a small object. Yeah, here it is. is huge and the puzzle's all tiny in the corner. I wanted to explore the whole room, but I guess this is more interesting. Actually, it is. What do you have to say, Oracle? Beware the darker side of confusion and night. Never let the power of chaos overcome day's gentle light. Seek balance and harmony. As the moon makes way for the sun at dawn, so shall the sun always make way for the moon. Not sure what that means, but fiddling with things is the easiest way to figure out how they work. Um, okay, that goes on to the middle. Okay, the middle can go and then it goes on the right side. Okay, I can't move that back and this doesn't jump, so... My only recourse is to bring this back, so something has to be on this thing to move it. So if you want to move everything to the right side, which I guess we want to do, we're going to have to move two at once so we can bring one back. And this should be easy. You. You have no more moves you may take. Never let the power of chaos overcome day's gentle light. That line suddenly makes a lot more sense in hindsight. So we need to move them over to the right side, but we can't allow the number of night marbles to become greater than the number of white marbles, if there, I guess, if there at least is a white marble there. Otherwise, the black marble eats the white marble. I am a person of extreme, annoying, analytical perception sometimes when I'm not drunk. So I want to represent this puzzle in a very clear and concise mathematical way. Let's start by trying to take this puzzle and represent it mathematically. There are other ways to solve this, holistically um, speaking, with, once, with an understanding of the rules, but I think I might be insane. We want to represent this puzzle with mathematical notation. What are we representing? We need to represent the state of the puzzle at any one turn, the ways that it can change state, in other words, the moves that are available to us, the goal, and the limitations set on us. When I say limitation, I mean, for example, if there are too many black marbles overwhelming white marbles, that's considered an invalid state. Let us start with the represent representation of just the state itself. We are representing white marbles and black marble quantities on both the left and right sides. Position is irrelevant, really. We only care about the quantity. This simplifies things greatly. So first attempt is to make two pairs of values, the left side, which will be represented as WL sub C for the white left count and black L, BL sub C for the black left count, WR sub C for the white right count, and BR sub C, etc. Except I had only one remaining, so saying etc. was rather meaningless. I should have just finished my sentence. We are still missing something. Where's the paddle? The thing that allows us to move the marbles. We need to encode whether it is on the left side or the right side. I chose to do this with t equals, meaning turn number. 
The paddle always oscillates from left to right each move, and each move will advance the turn. So we can determine the paddle position by whether the turn is odd or even. Odd number turns, such as the first one. I will avoid my computer science need to start counting at zero. Will mean that we have left to right movement. And even number turns will mean we have right to left movement. Looks good, but I think we can do better. Let's remove the right side counter. We don't need it. We know what the right side is by the left side. If the left side is 3, 3, we know the right side must be 0, 0, because the left has all the marbles. If the left side is 2, 2, we know the right side must be 1, 1, because the left is missing one white and one black. So, where are they? They must be on the right side. There is no other side. Technically, the right side count is 3 minus whatever the left side is. Okay, now it's time to encode state transformation. Yeah, the, the, I mean moves. I call them state transformations. I meant to say moves. I was aiming for moves. I actually said state transformation. Yes, moves. So, assuming the marbles are available, the maximum number of types of moves available to us at any one time will be in this table. The paddle must move at least one and no more than two. Combine the different combinations of marbles and we get five unique moves. Not all of them will always be available. For instance, a move of moving two white marbles is impossible if there is only one white available. So at any one turn, we will be able to choose from a subset of these moves. So we have the numbers. How do these correlate with the representation of the marble quantities? On odd number turns, we are moving left to right. Since we represent only the left side, we subtract the left from those numbers. What this means is that if the left is 3 and we want to move 1, one white marble, and the left is 3 white, it would be subtraction. We're going left to right, and we only represent the left, so by subtracting from the left, we represent the concept of moving from left to right. Likewise, the inverse operation is applied when we go from right to left. On even number turns, we are going to be adding those values. Okay, all this math is mathy, but without the puzzle in our face, what are we working towards? We need a goal. Since the goal of this puzzle seems to intuitively be move all of the left onto the right, that implies that the goal is 0, 0. If the left side is empty, the right side will be full, which is what we want, presumably. Okay, let's add the rules. We can't ever get into a state where the powers of chaos overcome day's gentle light or whatever that oracle said. In other words, the number of white marbles must be greater than or equal to the number of black ones. But this is just the left side. If the number is greater on the left side, it follows that it will be smaller on the right side. Uh oh. So we combine these two and all we're left with is W sub C must equal B sub C. Drat. That requirement is tough to keep. It is also wrong. When messing around, I had moved a single black marble to the right side and back with no ill effects. Technically, that's unbalanced. So what's the problem? Mathematically, one is greater than zero. One black marble is greater than zero white marbles. But this puzzle is not directly following basic greater than logic. If there are no white marbles, there is nothing for chaos to overcome. So it doesn't matter how many black marbles there are if there aren't any white marbles on the same side. So that gives us an or condition for this. Two to be specific, W sub C can be either three or zero with no ill effects. This is because 3 implies the left side is completely filled and can't be overcome, and therefore the right side has nothing and also can't be overcome. 0 means the same thing, just inverted. The right side is filled, the left side is empty. These conditions are super easy to look for in our representation. Let's label our moves. W1, W2, B1, B2, and WB obviously means 1 white for W1, two whites for W2, one black for black one, uh, two blacks for B2, and Warner Brothers for WB. 
sorry, one white, one black for WB. We can keep track of which moves we make this way, so we can easily read it when we reach the goal. Remember, we need to keep track of all the moves we use to reach the goal, so we can replicate it actually solving the puzzle. Finally, one last condition. We cannot let any quantity go less than zero or greater than three. To do so would imply that there are four or more of a type of marble, and that would imply that one side would have negative marbles, which makes little sense, at least today when my head is clear. Now let's take advantage of this compact representation of the puzzle in these rules and draw to write out a solution. I prefer to write out the solution like this because it will allow me to easily see if I am repeating myself and always explore new and unique states of the puzzle. Essentially, I will be using a depth first search in a state tree to find a solution path. Don't worry if that didn't make any sense, at least I don't worry. I find myself in a room with a chalkboard. Not sure how I got here, but all the chalk's broken, so. I'm going to have to get some from my coat pocket because, of course, I keep chalk in my coat pocket. Who doesn't? I think I can use this to represent the puzzle. Well, what's... Why is there a plushie of Twilight Sparkle on the floor? I think the Oracle must have tried to make me feel comfortable, so I need a rubber duck to talk to. I'll put her right there. All right. I guess it's time to set up this puzzle. I'm going to start by putting the table of moves available. Okay. Now, how am I going to draw out all the possibilities? I'm going to make a series of lines, and in these lines is where I'm going to basically run through the puzzle. Um, let me label them T equals 1, 2, all the way up to some random value. Hopefully it won't take as long. Okay, write the conditions up there. So I can solve the puzzle in the main middle area. Oh, let's not forget the goal. Um, the initial state and the goal. Why is it so bloody dark in here? Oh, that looks like it just needs a little more power. Bright light, bright light. All right, that is more like it. So, I have set up the puzzle on this board. I'm talking to you, Twilight. You're my rubber duck. I think. I think I'm not talking to anybody else. So what I can do is with this sectioned off as such, each turn I can follow all the possibilities, break away any ones that are invalid or that I know won't lead to a proper solution, and then just keep following it down further and further and further until I reach the goal state eventually. Given how few choices there are, how small the numbers are. I don't expect this to be a gigantic tree of scariness. So I think this is doable by hand. I won't need a computer to solve it like this. All right, I guess the first step is to start. Turn number one, we're subtracting because we're moving from the left to the right. That gives us all five possibilities, so we can either have two, three, which would be one white moved. We can have one, three, which would be two whites moved. We can have three, two, which would be one black moved. We can have, I'm just going to use parentheses, these are hard to draw. We can have 3, 1, which is two blacks moved. Or we can have 2, 2, which is one of each moved. So, oh, there is a red chalk here. I'm going to cancel on anything that doesn't make any sense. So, 
these are already out because the number of whites is less than the number of blacks, so they'll be eaten up. In fact, one three is what I have. One three is what I accidentally did when I was messing around with the puzzle. That leaves three two, three one, and two two, all of which are okay, but. 3-2 doesn't make any sense. If I only move one black, then one black's the only thing I can bring back. This just, is just going to loop back over to 3-3. Three, three. So, no point in even trying that. That leaves 3-1 and 2-2. Two, two. And they're both viable. They're both good possibilities. So, I'm going to use 2-2 two, two because it's closer to 0-0 zero, zero than 3-1 to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but... Might as well pick something and then try it. So, my first, let me write this in blue. My first move will be the Warner Brothers move, leading me to 2 2 That's funny. So, what are my options here? I am now on the right side and I have to move back to the left side, so I have to add. And there's only going to be one of each on that side. One white, one black. Which means that I don't have W2 and B2 available to me because there's just not enough marbles on that side. So I only have three possibilities here, which is good. So I can either move one white back, which will bring me to three, two. W1 and I'm adding because I'm on an even numbered turn right to the left. I can either do B1 and that and that would be the other way. That would be 2, 3. Or I can do Warner Brothers again, which will just bring me back to 3, 3, which isn't relevant. I'll write that anyway because I'm going to cross it out and I like crossing things out. It feels so fun. Go away. That leaves 3, 2, and 2, 3. Hmm. Well, 2, 3 is actually a problem because the number of whites is smaller than the number of blacks on the left side. We're not allowed to have that. If W, um, if the left side whites is not 3 or it's not 0, they have to be equal to the blacks and be balanced. They're not. So this is impossible, which means the only viable move from 2-2 two, two is going to 3-2, two, which is W-1. That's our only choice. There's no option there at all, which is good, which means our, this isn't going to go all insane. Also, just to make things a little bit easier, is this white or is this off white? I'm going to circle or square the option that I choose. So I chose 2 2 before, and here I chose to go to 3 2. Let's make things a little bit more obvious. And I might as well circle the initial part. Okay, once again, I'm going to be subtracting. I'm on the left side and I have, I'm pretty sure, all five options available to me. So, write them all out then. W1, that would be 2-2. Two, two. W2, that would be 1-2. B1, that would be 3-1. B2, that would be 3, 0. And Warner Brothers would be 2, 1. Okay, let's see what doesn't work. Well, 2, 2 we've already done. It's up here. And also, it's on an even numbered turn. So 2, 2 for 4 is the same state as 2, 2 in turn 2. If this was a 2-2 two, two in a different turn, like turn 3, it wouldn't technically be the same state because um, the pattern will be on the other side. 
so you wouldn't be moving the same way. So because that's the same, there's no point in looking at it. One, two, once again, we have our problem. We cannot have one, two without the white marble being eaten, so that goes away. Three, one, that's okay. Three, zero, that's okay. Wait a minute. Three, one is not okay. Well, it actually kind of is in a sense, but I'll get to that in a moment. Three, zero is okay. Two, one is not okay because once again, they're not, the white is not equal to the black, which means that even though white is greater than black on the left side, this implies that there's one white and two blacks on the right side, which is not good, at least not in the confines of the puzzle. So, go away. Three, one is valid, but we already have a three, one up here. We didn't go through it yet. But if this, les, if this leads to a solution, it will be faster to go through the 3-1 up here than it will be the 3-1 down here. So, just so I do not forget, in case we need to go back to things, I'm just going to enclose this in green. It's a viable solution, but I'm not going to choose it. Instead, if this does lead to a solution that isn't a repeat, that quicker, it's going to be from 3-0. So I'm going to choose 3-0. I unfortunately forgot to, no I didn't forget, I'm, what am I talking about? Alright, with 3-0 that means I did a change of black by 2. So I did a B2 move. All right, what are my options now? I'm on the right side again. I'm on turn four. So I need to add, but all the whites are on the left side. So the only options available to me are blacks because anything I add to white would make it go over four. And we established earlier, we can't do that. So what do I want to do? I can either do B1 or B2. Alright, well, if I do B1, then I'm going to be adding back 1, which will bring me to 3, 1. If I do B2, I'll be adding back 2, which will be, bring me to 3, 2. 3, 2 was already explored up here. In fact, it's what we chose. So that's irrelevant. 3, 1. As I said before, 3, 1 was up here, but that's not the same 3, 1. The turn matters. For turn 4, 3, 1. Turn 4, 3, 1 means that we're at 3, 1 and we have to go left. Sorry, we have to go right to left. Right now, we're at 3, 1, but we're going left to right. Technically, it's a different state. So that's still valid. We haven't actually touched that state yet, and it's viable, it works, it fulfills our requirement. So let's pick that one again. At this point, it's pretty much just doing it, just going through everything, and that's gonna be time consuming. So I'll do it quickly without blabbering my mouth too much. So Move to here, we did a transformation of B1. Obviously we're going to choose this and we're going to move our available options. Are, oh, all of them are available to us except for B2 because we can't subtract 2 from 1 without going into a negative. So that leaves so, run through this again. 2 and 1. Doesn't work, they're not equal. 1, 1, fine. 3, 0. That works. Have we done 3, 0 before? Yes, we have on an even turn. It was up here. This would make us loop again. 2, 0. Doesn't work. Doesn't fulfill our requirements once again. 
that means that the right side is full of, of black marbles and there's one white marble on the right side which is not good. That just leaves one one. This is working out perfectly. Frequently, we're left with only one possibility that makes sense. So all I have to do is just keep following that possibility to the end, keeping track of our moves, and we should have a move set that will give us a solution. And that leaves us with the ability to add. This would, it would be so great if we were subtracting right now. We just get rid of two. We're good. We're done. We can't do that. We have to add. Oh, bugger. So, what are our options? Well, the only thing that's not available to us is B2 because we can't go above three, so, but the other four are. So we can have W1 for one. Once again, lack of equality, go away. Fine, fine, go away. So I guess on my first pass, I'm looking to see which states are gonna consume the white marbles. Then on my second pass, I'm looking to see which states I've already done. Have we done 2-2 two, two before on an odd number? Yes, we have, right here. Uh, we have a nice, interesting symmetry, by the way. There's always a choice here that brings us back to something we did previously, which makes sense. So the 2-2 two, two we've already done previously, that's irrelevant. That leaves us with just the 0-3. And we can kind of actually just stop here. Because holistically speaking, it's kind of obvious what the rest of the solution is. We're just going to be, we can subtract, which means we get rid of two blacks. And then we'll have to bring one back. And then we'll bring the other two back, and then it will be done. Don't have to worry about... Once we got three on this side, once we had three... Um, sorry, once we had zero on this side, which means we have three whites on the right side... It's a lot easier now because all we have to do is just ferry the blacks over and the blacks can be wherever they want to be. It's only the whites that have that restriction on their movement. So I can might as well just stop here, but just for the sake of completeness, I will record what I do from here. This was a B1 transformation. I had moved one black over. And then here, I am going to move two blacks over to the other side. And then that would leave me at, I'm subtracting, so zero, one. I have to add, makes logical sense. I just want to bring one black back. Um, that's the only thing that's going to make any sense at all. So that leaves me with zero, two. And now I can solve the puzzle completely by performing a P2 operation. Zero, zero. We've hit our goal state. This set of moves should give us a solution. And I say us as if this plushy pony is actually animate in any way. All that's left to do is take this solution and apply it to the puzzle. We start with WB. Basically, this is just following the goal we said, but I think it's better for me at this point to point out the holistics of this. Our goal is to try to fill the right side with whites first so we can carry the blacks over. And what we're doing is we're trying to keep things balanced in such a way that there's always a black that we can take back without accidentally bringing back a white and having it eaten when it brings to the left side. Oh, that's not the size of the diamond I first saw, but it's pretty. It's a jewel. I guess this is one of them. We got a jewel. What do we do with it? There's a door that should lead out of the puzzle room, but we got here by falling down a well.
and we come back by falling up a well. Okay. Wait, where exactly did we come from? Oh, okay. An almost stop sign door. Not quite, not enough sides, but that's where we came out of. I'm presuming it might go back, so... Where should we go now? The other door just takes us back to the entrance, which means the only other place I can think of is the altar room. So this is where the jewel exploded. I'm gonna guess we have to reconstitute the primary jewel with the smaller jewel pieces that it was made out of. Or should I dump in the center, maybe? The tasks resolved so far marked here are 1. 